Welcome guys, we are back. That's right, Amazon's the power, episode six, Sparkle Fingers. There was so much going on in this episode, it felt like an electrician's version of Fifty Shades of Grey. But you know what? Spoilers ahead for anyone who hasn't seen the power yet, and let's jump straight in. D, you know what? I know we usually do an overview for these episodes, but there's one scene we've got to dive straight into. Is that the scene where where they go for a little walk, yeah? Yeah, it's the scene where they just go for a stroll. And yeah, like I thought it was. There. So what Ben's talking about here, guys, is the intersex scene. So yeah. Josh's boyfriend, Ryan, turns out that he's intersex and he's got a skein. And now, I need to tell you, when I first saw... Obviously, I know this scene's coming. And when I first saw how they'd done it, I was like, Ben's going to have a field day with this. He's going to be so happy. Right then, Ben, come on, get your thoughts out there. Do you know what? First of all, I, I predicted this last episode. I'm telling you now, anyone who's watched our previous episode... If you haven't, go back now. I predicted that this would happen. Now, yes. Oh, I, hang on. You said a child yeah, was born. No, no, no. Okay, okay. So I predicted a, child, a male child would be born with powers last episode. But I also predicted, I think it was the one before that, where I was saying about uh, transgender men. Now, hear me out. Transgender men would be able to have the power due to the increased levels of estrogen. Now, I understand in this that he was intersex and at birth he had both genitals and he had an operation and became a male and he even said he uh, identifies as a male right but because of his increased levels of estrogen he then therefore developed the skein and developed the powers which is what i was saying two episodes ago it was but you're wrong i'm gonna just straight away mate. i'm gonna put you down in your book you're wrong and uh here's why so intersex yep go obviously on. you are both both sexes or a combination of mm -hmm. weird you know you have ovaries and a penis or whatever, that means the organ would have been there from birth. Higher levels of estrogen would have activated it, but the organ would have still been there from birth. And now, here's well gripe. In the book, it explains there are others who are intersex with skeins because they are essentially both male and female at the time of birth. Birth. That's the key part here. Being transgender doesn't affect that. But in the TV show, we'll give you the key this. He mentions something to do with extra estrogen, but that makes no sense. It's about the yeah. birth but of an insect. In, in, yeah, but just because they have both male and female like, reproductive systems, essentially, that doesn't mean that they have everything about them is female and male, right? So, so therefore, that you could still have an increased amount of estrogen to create that. You don't have to. I will, I'm going to explain this in the words I used <laughs> last episode. I can give all the testosterone I want to a woman. She will not grow a dick, Okay. Do you remember that? Remember that? Rule? I remember that. Yeah, I remember yeah, that, yeah. Remember that? Clearly. Yeah. Give a man all the estrogen he wants, he will not grow a skein. Trust me. It's not how it works. 100%. I'm going to dash your hopes. I knew this would be a bloody sticking point this week for you. No, well, Amazon, and keep doing me favours and bring on before the end of the series that first man with <laughs> the peppers. Yeah. Make it happen for me, please. All right. Go on then, Steve. Well, you know, for me... That was a shocking moment. Like, it was, and, least, and, and, because, I knew, and I knew it would be powerful. But I didn't know. In terms of, obviously, I've not read the book, so I didn't expect anything. And I was watching that scene, and obviously, at first, they had kind of the, uh, I want to say, uh, a stereotypical role reversal. Jazz, can we start? Start. Start, Jazz. I said start. <gasps> Where Josh was forcing herself on her boyfriend. I was going to say, this, and this is weird, because this is out of character for Josh. Yeah. Josh, in the book, she wouldn't be like this. She's quite shy and yeah. reserved in the book. But I quite like the fact that they almost did this, this reverse. And Because, again, what I will say about the author and what they've done here is they make situations where if you're a male watching this, you go, ah, I could see the bad thing about that. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's what's good about it. So doing that is good, but it kind of ruins... Josh's character. I've yeah. had this gripe with many characters in this in the TV series now. They're fundamentally changing them, and I don't know if it's in a good way. But well, for me, uh, I'm not a fan of Josh now, and not not because of that scene. Well, I don't know, I'll get to that in just a moment. But for me, there was that moment where obviously she she forced him off, and then and, and you know I'll carry on with it. And and later on in the day, they get back together, and he opens up, and he's like, "Listen, this this is how I was. This is how I was born. You know, I, I've I've got this this thing, and this is what I can do." And she's like, suddenly makes it all about her. And she's like, well, why didn't you tell me this? You, you've, you've known I've been struggling for this forever. And I'm thinking, that guy's just opened up about a massive secret of part of his life. 
and he, he's opened up to someone he obviously cares about and she just shoots him down like that it's crazy isn't it? I got offended by that today I was like you, you joke <laughs> yeah and to be honest in the book and it did shock me I thought he was just going to say he was gay <laughs> he was like oh I, I was like, gay. she was like I got something to tell you and I was like he's gay he's gay and he was like I was born both and I was like what <laughs> So, Shock me. just to clarify as well, your whole theory of the boys being born, he kind of evaded, you know that, because he's intersex, so he's mm-hmm. infertile. Mm-hmm. So I'm just put, I just wanted to put that out there so you mm-hmm. understand this boy thing's not a thing. Also, in the book... <coughs> <laughs> oh my God, he's dead. He's, he's gone. He's done one. That's what happens when you eat a sweet at the wrong time. <laughs> okay, we'll cut this. <laughs> also, Ben, in the book... Joss knows about Ryan before she ever meets him because they meet online. Yeah. Because in the book, Joss's powers are so messed up. She joins these chat groups of people who have messed up powers and there's other boys in there because obviously they're like almost, they're almost like considered freaks because they're not fully working and that's, so that's what happens there. So I feel like, this is what I'm saying, doing this with Ryan makes Josh's character a little bit shit. Mm-hmm. And also, we talk about Margot's family, Margot's extended <coughs> family Joss's brother, obviously, he's full into the urban docks now. Mr. Yeah. Andrew Tate wannabe. He is, he is. That is Ryan in the book. Oh, okay. His character has been completely separated. So Ryan has become two characters. So in the book, Ryan is actually on those forums initially. So do you think they've done that to make it more of like a a, a family I think kind of... I think they've done it more to make you feel more sorry for Ryan. Because now, hear me out. Hmm. They probably didn't want an intersex character being a bad guy in this. No, yeah. because, of, because, of, because of how current political things are, that might not come off great. So I, think, you, so I think they split it on purpose so people, you know, so you don't be changed dickheads. it to, to fit in with today's society. Yeah, I, th- I think yeah, I think so, per- personally. I can't, other than that, I can't see any reason why she's got a brother and she doesn't have one in the books. Okay. Well, do you know what? There, there, there's another thing I noticed here, and I'm hoping you can help me explain this, actually, because I, I didn't quite understand this when I was watching. It was when Margot was getting tested for uh, mm-hmm. EOD, and she passed the test. And I didn't understand how she's passed the test. So what, what happens there, mate, is she didn't fail the test. There you go, fixed it. No, okay, so it's explained really poorly yeah. in the TV show. But in the book, it's explained that these tests are now done on all small girls. Because hmm. even baby girls have the skein. And basically the idea is you pump electricity into someone and the skein will fire off electricity back. So that's how they figure out you've got the power. Oh, okay. And obviously it's involuntary. So people hmm. like... She was happy with a lot of electric. You, 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 you jizzed it. You jizzed, jizzed the wrong word, you know what I mean? Because, and basically, the skein would fire off a pulse back. Now, in the book, Margot is shitting herself at this point because obviously Dan has set it all up yeah. to get Margot fired. But yeah. he, doesn't, he doesn't know she's got it, but he speculates it. So in the book, we get this massive monologue inside of Margot's head as, she's being pow- as it's going on. And she says, oh, I can feel setting one. I can feel it. She's like, anyone who'd fail at this point is pathetic. And as it dolls up and dolls up and dolls up, Margot's like, I can really feel it now. But I just not gonna let myself discharge it. And she basically says, when she finally gets to level ten, she's like, Oh, I can really feel it, but I can just stop myself from releasing the power. And she even says, in all fairness, anyone that is this is done to who can't survive level ten probably is a danger to themselves because they can't control their power. And she says, uh-huh. I can fully understand why children can't do this because it takes a bit of a bit of almost, you know, a bit of stubbornness. Yeah, yeah. You but can. in this, it almost feels like Margot passes by pure chance. Yeah. In the book, like, as she goes through the test, you can see Margot's, Margot's doing this in spite of everything else. Margot figures this out on her own. And I feel really cheated with the TV yeah. character because I feel like Margot, again, with all the characters, I just feel cheated by them because they're not their true self. And Margot's an absolute fucking badass in the books. And she just figures this shit out. So she just goes out there and does it. And I'm a little bit let down by it. But now you know, that's basically the step And then Blimey. when she goes off to the bench to do a little childbirth of electricity. It's not a childbirth. It's child. Yeah, she was like, oh, she that, that baby. looked more orgasmic than last week's no, episode. No, I think that was more. That was that was a, that was definitely a dig on childbirth. But anyway, in the book, she just walks off and deals with it. Mm. Don't need to discharge him, man, because she's a fucking badass. And again, I don't know why they put this weakness in there. I don't know, but uh, it's a bit weird. It's a Talking of that weakness, though. Yeah, go on then. One of the other things I noticed is uh, the girls seem more scared in the, in, in the TV series than the book. In the book, girls are almost... It, it's almost... It explains that girls almost become yeah, but more you, dominant straight away. Even though there's guns, yeah, girls you, are less... Do you feel, not think they're building up to that slowly because... I, I do, but because of how... Because we're on episode six of nine yeah. now, 
in the book, I have gone past that point, so I'm not sure yet. So I, I think I, I can see the slow progression. We're seeing a lot more females now. Like, like you say, Margot's just survived number ten. You got Tatiana, who's a, an absolute beast anyway, and then you've got Roxy, who who's made a comeback, and now she's starting to think. Actually, you know, I, I feel like a lot of women are slowly starting to think. You know what? I don't need this, and I can stand up for myself. And I think, yeah, you they say it might be different to the book, but you can still see that progression. It might be a bit slower than what you've, you mm. probably used to, but yeah. Yeah, so you bring up Roxy's character. Go on then. I'm still unhappy with that one as well. <laughs> There's a common theme here, but no. I think, um, obviously, we saw in this one, Roxy's yeah. beat up about her brother yeah. and her stepmom hates her guts, which her stepmom does hate her guts. But in the book, like I mentioned before, Terry's death isn't Roxy's fault and Roxy essentially saves the day mm. in the book. So they've got this weird flip where they've made Roxy almost... What's, I can't think of the word, like incompetent. Yeah. She's not incompetent in the book. It feels like they're making her incompetent. Like I said in this, her dad treats her like shit. In the book, her dad's a cunt, but he does love her. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's, it's just a different way they've portrayed it. I reckon, I reckon she's going to kill her dad later. You reckon yeah, so? Yeah, I reckon, I don't know, I reckon the way they're building up, Ooh. I reckon she's going to kill her dad and then either one, take over the family business or two, go to jail and we'll see maybe, obviously because you know, we might go beyond the book then, they might see a, a version of Roxy in jail potentially. Mm. Oh, so you saw future prediction there from you is uh, future prediction yeah no, Roxy's one, yeah. gonna future kill prediction. her dad mm. Oh, yeah. fair enough so one of the other little hidden details that I spotted mate towards the end of the yeah. episode Margot's obviously giving her speech which is the speech from the very first episode that says six months later I don't know if you caught that ah I didn't so know that's what, so we're now back at the real time of the very start of the first episode ah okay, okay. nice nice when that guy sets himself on fire I thought hang on a minute this is the second thing I've seen in the recent month where some activist sets themselves on fire. And you were like, what What else did we watch that that happened? Extrapolations? I did not know what it is with activists going, oh no, I'll fix the world if, if I kill myself. But do you know what? Saying that, it does fix the world and, and hear me out, right? If we remember, uh, you know, I'm going to embarrass myself here, but I can't remember the woman's name. But do you remember the whole, uh, the activist who stood in front of the king's horse? And, oh. and killed herself so obviously the racing was going on she's walked out stood in front of the king's horse and got hit and uh, I think she was part of the suffragettes and uh, that's how the women got the vote so killing yourself Steve for uh, the, the greater good does actually work maybe yeah. but I mean <sighs> I'm rooting for you men who catch yourself on fire I've got you back <laughs> <laughs> so then let's just have a a little bit of a play here yeah go on then is Margot a bad character because obviously in the book there those men are protesting against her I don't actually get at this point in the TV show, what they're protesting against Margot for. I'm going to use the whole phrase that we used to love, Steve. Uh, just because she's a bad guy doesn't mean she's a bad guy. <laughs> because I, I think Margot is a, a bad person, but not necessarily... I, I think I, I, don't know, I think I think she might be portrayed to others as a bad person, but in her mind, she's doing things for the right reason, but some people may not see that. So do you think she's a bad person then like, I'm asking I think you, not, what, not what's your this, opinion of the TV show so not at this present moment I don't think she's but I think the way that she's handled that test and she's like okay I've got the power I can I can fake a test I'm I'm, I'm now running for senate she's kind of saying you know what there's, there's there's no blocker for me and my path and my, my future so she can just see a clear horizon and she's going for it and that is ultimately that power is bad because if you if you oh, okay. can't see something that's blocking you to to stop her and you're just going to keep going and moving no matter what, that's bad. Look at the people she's going to hurt. So you think ultimately she's becoming power hungry now? I reckon we're seeing a, a close connection between her and Joss, especially because I reckon at the end that's going to that that connection is essentially going to sever. And I feel that Margot's going too much down this Perry direction, thinking she's she's making the world great for what the world needs, but actually she's neglecting what the people around her need. And I think that that's going to cause a bit of a Oh, okay, fair yeah. enough. Oh, that's good. One last thing I want to talk about, and obviously that's Tunday's character. And we yeah. spoke here a lot about. We think this episode really started to throw current gender norms reversed, didn't we? Throwing mm-hmm. them around and changing them. And there was a particular line I liked in this. It was during when Tunday was speaking to his brother. I think it was his brother's wedding. Yeah. And his brother said, "Oh, she's got the power, and she hid it from me, and she could easily hurt me now." And someone said. Do you not trust her? And he's like, oh, well, she could hurt me. And then someone said, but you could have always hurt her in the past. And that made me think, like, I'm like, do, you know, ladies out there who watch this, do you do you think that your husband would hurt you? Do you, you know, like, like, 
Like, do you think like, oh, they could, they could hurt me? Because that never, because that never crosses my mind. Me going, oh, that would hurt my wife. Yeah. But I wonder if women actually are scared of that. There was that phrase where he said, "Your arms are so big, you could hit her with one punch or something." Yeah, like and that. I was like, and he was like, "But I wouldn't do that." And he was like, "You've got to trust her." And that's what I'm saying. Like, it was yeah. weird to see that flipped. And I was like, again, what the author does well, flips things around. And you go, yeah, you know what? I've never thought of that. You know, is that something that women do think about occasionally? Let us know in the comments if, if that is kind of something you you guys think about. But yeah, I just thought that was interesting. I really liked that Tunde. Got back with his boo, didn't he? He did, he did. He got some... Uh, he got some lightning some love, as I'm static, calling it. Some static love. Oh, was... Well, do you know what, Steve? Before we finish up, do you think... You've obviously read the book. Do you think we're going to finish the book in season one? Absolutely not. I cannot see any way now we finish that. But we've got three episodes left, I believe. Seven, eight, and nine. I do not think we're getting the book finished. So I don't know if there's been a season two confirmed yet. But I don't think we can finish it unless the goal down your route of making changes to the books. I don't know. Let us know, guys. You, anyone else out there who's read the book, let us know if you're going to think they if you think they're going to finish the TV series in line with the book because I can't see it. Have you got any future predictions, mate, this week? I haven't. No, I think I'm still rooting on uh, our baby boy to be born. Oh, here he goes yeah. with the baby boy. <laughs> well, uh, anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the power so far. Well, obviously, we're past that halfway point now. Let us know if you're uh, going to continue to the end and we'll catch you next week. Something new. See ya. Yeah.